In today's video, I'll be sharing 12 DIY craft room storage ideas. Welcome to Creative by Nature DIY and Decor. My name is Donna. Today's video is a compilation of past DIYs. Some were made for different reasons, but make perfect organization for a craft room. The original videos will be in a playlist down below, along with chapters that you can link on again in the description box. If viewing on your computer, you just have to tap on the show more and it'll reveal the description box. And if you are viewing on your mobile, you click on the down arrow beside the title and the description box will pop up and you just have to scroll down. Okay, so for our first project, I'm gonna be using these baskets I picked up at Dollar Tree along with these plant hangers. Now these baskets have got a handle on it I removed that and then I also cut off the loops that were holding the handle. I'm not sure if the baskets they have now have that part or not. So if they don't, of course you can skip this part. I was just removing the sharp edges and covering up those sharp edges of where I cut the wire just with some tacky glue. Our baskets are all ready to go and now it's time to start to attach the plant hanger chains. As you can see, they've got these really great little attachments on the end and this is gonna make it so easy to attach them to the basket. So I'm just gonna clip them onto the edge as you see here and I am going to play around with it until I get a balanced basket when I lift it up as you can see here and then I'm going to continue to add the rest so I will have to take some of these apart as I want them to be shorter in between I just use your wire cutters just to pull everything apart as needed here I'm removing six links and that will attach between the upper and lower baskets So you want to attach this to the upper rim of your basket, as you can see right here. And that way here, your chain will hang evenly all the way down. So I placed my last basket inside the middle one. And that way here you'll get even placement all the way around they'll match up and then you're just going to test it out to see if everything is balanced again of course you can move things around as needed so here is our basket it is hanging up and you can store all kinds of things this is a great way to utilize that vertical space So this next piece is a thrift store makeover. I found this spice drawer at a thrift store and I gave it a coat of some craft paint. Now I gave it about two to three coats. It is a cream color. It's kind of like an antique white. I really, really like this color. And I give the entire piece two to three coats. So everything is all nice and dry and now I'm going to go in and distress the edges. I am just going to be using some sandpaper. Now I did like how this looked but I felt like it still wasn't enough distressing for what I like so I decided to go in and add some gel stain. Now this is the walnut stain and it's put out by Deco Art. I added just a touch of water on my rag and that helped to spread it out nicely without there being too much in one spot. It's really great to be able to get it into like the little grooves and whatnot. It just makes it look so much older. 
So now I'm going to be covering up that glass panel and I cut my pattern paper down to size. I'm just gonna be using some tacky glue to place the paper into place. As you can see here, I love how this looks. It's got some text on it and it looks old. I'm just spreading it out just to remove any air bubbles. Now to help secure everything into place and to finish off the edges, I'm just using some hot glue and I'm attaching some jute twine. This was such a great find. I just love how this came together and it's great to just store some embellishments in there and it really looks nice and decorative in a space as well. All right, so for these next two projects, I am using some old denim jeans and I'm cutting them down. Now this particular one is going to be a sack. So I am gluing a one end shut. And then I'm gonna form two points on the bottom by flattening out that bottom seam. I'll turn it inside out. And where I had created those points, I am going to add some hot glue and that will help to hold its shape. Using something like this is great if you are on a tight budget because we all have old jeans kicking around. Once the glue has set, you can turn that back the right way out and you can see our corners are pointing out. So I'm just going to glue those down and then I'll be turning it back so that the inner leg portion of the jeans is showing. I like that distressed or rugged look. Now I have folded over the edge and I am going to be gluing all that into place. So now I'm gonna add this beautiful uh, decorative lace just on the inside of the rim. I just thought it would be a really nice added touch. So once you have the trim in place, you can fold the rim back down and then it is ready to use. For our next denim project, I am going to be using a coffee tin. Tins are amazing. I love them so much. I use quite a few in my craft room. And again, I'm going to be using the denim and I'm using the inside of the leg to cover this one. I just cut it down and then I am going to be folding it over again to create a rim. Now. I need to cut off the excess, so I'm just making sure that the rim is even with the edge. And then that I will take a white marker, sorry, a white pencil, and I'll mark a line all the way around. And then I'll have the exact measurement I need to cut off and it will fit on this tin nicely. So I'm just going to slip this piece back over the can and then I am going to start to form the shape that I like. So I am going to be folding over that edge just like you see here and I need to make sure that everything stays secure so I do end up gluing the fabric onto the tin and I'll just use my hot glue for that. Again, I'm going to be adding some trim just around the edge as you see that I've got this really fun rickrack in my stash so I'm just going to apply that with some hot glue. And then they're ready to be used. This is how my daughter uses them in her bedroom but I thought this one little basket here was great to store some rags. For this next project, I dove into my stash of scrap fabric and I found this beautiful piece that's got these beautiful garden roses. And I'm going to be cutting some strips of about an inch and a half and I'm going to just scrunch them up to create a raw edge. Now you'll need several pieces, a 
love this fabric it's so beautiful you'll also need a tin from the recycling bin this is a literal trash to treasure <laughs> So I'm gonna be wrapping this tin up with these strips of fabric. You'll need a little dab of glue to start. And then you're gonna to start to wrap your fabric around. Apply a little bit of hot glue here and there along the way just to help hold your fabric into place. So I'm gonna just continue to wrap the fabric around the tin. When you get down to the end, like here, you're going to gently start to bring your fabric down and then you're gonna to continue to work around your tin. Once you get down to the bottom, you just want to continue to add your strips of fabric until you've got that bottom edge all covered up. You can trim off the excess and then glue that into place. And then I'm going to flip my tin upside down and trim off all that excess fabric that's on the bottom. And that's it. It's all ready to use. All right, so I'm going to be showing you how to distress a tin. This is a really cool technique. You're going to want to start by sanding and roughing up the surface of your tin. You're also going to want to remove any adhesive that might be remaining from the label. So next you're going to need some hydrogen peroxide and you will want to have that in a spray bottle. I'm going to spray the surface of our tin and then using some table salt, I'm going to sprinkle that all over and I'm going to continue to add the two on the tin. And what's going to happen is that it's going to start to corrode as you can see here. Now this one, I left it for a year and the I don't know it just continued to react and that's it it's such a fun project to make all right so we're gonna work on another tin and this time I'm using some floral sheet moss now this one has a sticky back so it makes it great to use for something like this you'll also need some preserved reindeer moss just to help cover up any seams or any spots that might not have much moss on it so I flipped the moss over and I'm just marking out the size that I need to cover my tin. Here I'm just using my rule to create my straight line and then I'll just use my scissors to cut it out. So I am only going to peel back sections of the sticky back at a time. So I'll just press my tin into place and just for a little added insurance I am going to be applying some hot glue just to glue down that one edge as you saw there and then I'll continue to wrap the moss around and then again I will be finishing it off with a dab of hot glue. Now this didn't completely fit right around so I will have to cut another little piece to fit in that portion that you can see right there. So I am going to be using hot glue for this little strip because I really did not want that to fall off. I don't know how good the glue is on the back of this moss. Now you can see the seams where I have attached that. So that's where the additional reindeer moss is going to come in handy. I'll just be using hot glue and applying that over the seams and that'll just hide it. And I also end up using it in some spots where the moss was a little sparse. I really like how this one turned out as well. I think tins are just a great budget friendly way to organize your craft space. Alright, so we're going to be working on another tin, but this time I am using some birch bark. Now, you all know how much I love to use bark in a lot of my projects, and I thought this would be a great way to use some bark as well as some storage for in my craft room. 
So I have had a few questions about how I get my birch bark. I actually go foraging in the forest and I collect it from the ground, the forest floor. I do not peel it off the trees because that can kill the trees. And there are a lot of downed trees in my area where I can go into the forest and collect the bark. So as you can see, I'm just taking some pieces and I'm randomly applying the glue and then pressing the bark into place until I got the entire tin covered. So my tin is all covered, now I'm just going in and adding just little bits of lichen or the curly parts of the bark just here and there until I get the look that I like. Isn't this just a great piece of storage? Okay, so time for another tin. This time I'm using a smaller one and I'm going to give it two to three coats of some chalk paint by DecoArt in the color Whisper. It's kind of again a cream color, I really like this color and it covered this tin really nicely. Now, I'm gonna add a decorative element by using uh, two tones of some jute twine. This one is green, and then I also have the natural. So I wanna create a decorative band in the middle. So I'm just adding some hot glue, and then I am going to wrap the middle of the tin with the green. So I have the width that I like, so now I'm going to go in and add the natural jute twine and I'm going to create a decorative band above the green and below the green. There's definitely so many ways you can create budget-friendly storage for your craft room or using tins. You could cover these with some scrapbook paper, some music paper, some book paper. You can decoupage tissue paper or fabric. There are so many pretty ways to decorate these. All right, so I dove into my pile of felt scraps that I had, and I'm cutting out some flower shapes, leaf shapes, and some stems. Now, I'll have to apologize for the quality of footage on this one. This is an old video, but I just thought that this would be such a beautiful project for a craft room, so I really wanted to share it. So. Here I'm just cutting out some leaves and before I was cutting out some petals as well as some tulip shaped flowers. And here I've got some stems as well as a flower center. So what I like about this is that I added some stitching embellishments around the edge of my petals and it's just a basic running stitch using some a needle and some embroidery floss. And it's just the up and down motion and I create that for all the petals and as you can see I have a running stitch down the middle of a leaf and I'll show you this the center of the flower it turned really pretty it turned out really pretty as well this is called a seed stitch so it's just random stitching all over the center and it just looks like tiny little seeds so I'm adding all my little a bit embellishments on this stationary container that I picked up from Dollar Tree. I think they are great. And I'm just trimming any of the felt pieces down to interlock with each other. And I'll just be applying these using some hot glue once I have the layout I desire. Thank you. 
So I'll be finishing this one off with the flower center. I think it turned out so cute. And now I'm working on the large one and this one I'm adding the tulip flowers. Again, same idea, you're gonna glue it all into place once you figure out your placement, trim things down as needed. turn out so pretty. I love these for craft room storage. All right, so Dollar Tree has carried these collapsible storage bins for a while, and I had also found those rattan placements at Dollar Tree a while back. I don't know if they still have them or not, but I wanted to decorate the front of this bin. So I'm using this placemat, and I had to cut off the handle first off our bin and then I am going to just be cutting the placemat down by using that inner panel that helps to stabilize the bottom. So I'm just using that as my template. Now as you can see this placemat does have some string on it so I am using a mixture of a water and decoupage glue and then I'm going to paint that all over on the threads and that will help to prevent them from falling apart on us as we uh, cut this down to size for our bin. So I have seen rattan placemats in other stores as well, so just have a look around. So I wanted to use that handle as a tab because I still want to be able to access the in inside of this bin. So I just created that little tab and I glued it into place. And now I am going to start to attach our placemat. So I'm just going to glue the top edge down first using hot glue. So I found that it was easiest for me to roll the placemat down or back on itself and then add some hot glue as needed. So you're gonna add that last bead of hot glue at the bottom and then we're gonna have to trim off the excess placemat. So I'll be using some scissors and some wire cutters. Now I needed to cut through the strings on the bottom. It actually ended up lining up really, really well. So my strings did lift a little bit in some places. So I went ahead and just added a little bit more of my decoupage mixture. I allowed that to dry. And now I am going to trim off the edge by using my wire cutters. Now I did end up having to push the string down. As you can see here, it was in my way when I went to go and trim it. But once I did that, it was really easy to just snip through all of those. Again, use some decoupage to make sure all your edges are all secure. Once it's all dry, you can put the base into place and then it's ready to be used. So I've decided to show you one more way that you can decorate a tin. So I had this large coffee tin again in my stash and I give it a coat of some brown paint and I just needed one coat and you'll see why here in a minute. I found this willow fencing at my store called Dollarama. I have also seen this in other garden stores, so just have a look around. I thought it would be so cool to cover a tin with this, so I just cut the wires down and just remove the sharp edges and then I just roll the fencing around my tin and cut it down to size. So again I'm going to be using hot glue to attach this fencing to our tin. Use any adhesive that you like best. I just like hot glue. It works well for me. 
and you're just going to apply it and then roll the tin onto your fencing. I did end up having to remove some of those branches, but you can use those in any places that might be bare or missing a branch. I did end up going back in and doing that. So just for some added security and also to hide that wire, I'm wrapping, wrapping this with some jute twine and I'm just gonna tie it off with a simple knot. I hope this has inspired you to look for some different ways to create some budget-friendly storage for your craft room. So as always, I would love to know which project was your favorite, or if you have any ideas, please leave me a comment down below. I truly appreciate all of you joining me today We'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.